As I mentioned on my last stream, Russell Greer, who has been suing me for four years, was ordered by the federal judge, the magistrate rather, in the uh, federal district of Utah, to show cause for his lawsuit. He was ordered by the court to meet and confer with my attorney, Matthew Hardin, in regards to his case, to come up with a schedule. This is usually something, as I mentioned many times before, that happens at the beginning of a case, not four years into one. But here we are, four years into a case, nearing five, and we still do not have a scheduling conference to itemize discovery and the timeline of discovery and when we'll be ripe, so they say ripe for summary judgment or for a trial, uh, if a trial is needed to discern matters of fact, because that's what a jury does. They, they look at evidence and decide if things went one way or another, if they can't be ascertained by the, the, ju the judge himself. Um, so the court ordered him to show cause and he did not respond at all. He had two weeks to meet and confer, and uh, or sorry, he had two weeks to meet and confer for the schedule, and he was ordered to do so, and he did not do so. So he ignored the order, and so the judge says, you must show cause that I should not dismiss this case right now. And, of course, when that happens, as it has happened in the past, he jumps up and suddenly files something and says, oh, I'm so sorry, my life was a train wreck, and I need more time. Now... A responsible party would have filed for an extension. I'm busy. Something came up. My, my, I have issues. I need an extension of time. It's very disrespectful both to the parties and to the court to not file for an extension. So this was Russell Greer's attempt to show cause that he should be allowed to continue suing me even though he's not really participating in the trial or in the litigation. Plaintiff. Russell Greer comes now and responds to the court's October 7th show cause order. Introduction. As explained in the corresponding motion to file for file to leave for the APMR, the, which um, he filed uh, his scheduling conference, and I'll get to that in a second, the last few months of Russell Greer's life has been completely unbelievable. Dealing with quasi-homelessness and the record-breaking Las Vegas heat, family members dying or near death, job loss, but through the proverbial flames, plaintiff has pushed through the dumpster fire of his life because the fire of determination that burns inside of him has burned stronger than the dumpster flames that surround him. This determination burns in part because defendants play a large part of why Greer is in this current predicament in this case can truly avenge plaintiff's losses. Avenging plaintiff's losses is the fire of determination that burns within him. Plaintiff will show below why this case should not be dismissed for lack of prosecution. 1. Unexpected life issues momentarily cause a missed deadline. Plaintiff completely understands how the, from the court's perspective, it may appear how plaintiff isn't taking the case seriously. However, 2024 has been an awful year, but it's improving. Greer's father is currently in the ICU, and so that threw him for a loop. But as the court can see, plaintiff has abided by all other deadlines and motions. Oh, that's not true, just in case you're wondering. <clears throat> he was ordered to do this in February. He was ordered again in October to do it. He still hasn't. With the corresponding motion to leave to file APMR, plaintiff is very confident he can abide by the proposed deadlines. Um, two, the Tenth Circuit ruled Greer stated a claim. The second reason this case should not be dismissed is because a 3-0 Tenth Circuit ruled in plaintiff's favor. The Supreme Court even rejected defendant's arguments. No. The Supreme Court did not hear the arguments. He did not reject anything. And so it would be distressing if this case was dismissed for lack of prosecution. It would be distressing, chat. That's, that's really... <laughs> it would be distressing, he says. 
Defendants have convinced themselves that infringing on others' copyrights is fair use, and plaintiff has shown why there is no way they could be fair use. If the court dismisses the case, then it will only incentivize defendants to continue their rampage of infringements and harassment, not just against Greer, but countless other Kiwi Farms victims. So we have one, two, three, four paragraphs, pretty small, pretty lean paragraphs explaining why he was late and uh, that the 10th stated a claim, I guess. But let's get to the real meat of this motion. Josh Moon, bad. <clears throat> Number three, holding Mr. Moon to account. Lastly, points one and two build up to this last point. Kiwi Farms has ran since 2013-ish. Since that time, countless people have had their lives and reputations ruined because of Kiwi Farms. One of those victims is plaintiff. Mr. Moon has suffered no legal repercussions because he is a very smart individual who has used our country's outdated laws uh, to his advantage, namely Section 230. The opening in his shield, though, is copyright, and he has the misguided impression that copyrights of non-famous lull cows, which is a subjective term anyways, gives him fair use to target and destroy the aspirations and works of said lull cows. If this case is dismissed, Moon will continue to ruin the lives and plaintiff will continue to suffer the cycle of unemployment and homelessness because Kiwi Farms have people have decided Kiwi Farms have people have decided that Greer must suffer because he has a disability. And they, in turn, have made it very hard to live a life because our current world revolves around online searches and people aren't smart enough to decipher sources. As evidence, Greer has had to get into contact with a remailer site yesterday to ask them to block his IP address from receiving endless harassing messages being sent to him from a Kiwi Farms user through the remailer service. Conclusion Greer fully intends on prosecuting this case and is fully confident he can follow the proposed schedule and the corresponding APMR. So, um, no comment on that. What he did after this was he very quickly filed a scheduling uh, uh, agreement with the court. Basically, how many depositions he needs to do when he proposes a trial. Generally speaking, um, in a serious copyright case, uh, discovery can take about 16 months. So you'd be looking at like a mid-2026 uh, trial or uh, summary judgment. Um, Greer proposed a trial by jury in January. Um, he did not ask for a jury trial in his uh, complaint, and he didn't challenge us saying that we don't want a jury trial in our response. So he's waived the right to ask for a jury trial about four years ago, but he's asking for a jury trial again. Um, and he wants the jury trial in like four fucking months from now. Not even. That's not going to happen. That could never happen ever for any reason whatsoever. The other thing that he did is he completely lied about uh, agreeing. He listed like his list of demands. And he filed this in the court and said that he and defendants have reached an agreement. And he specifically says like 10 times throughout this document that plaintiff and defendant agree to X, Y, Z. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this draft paper that says that same thing, and you're supposed to fill it in with what you want. Then you email it to your opposing counsel. Then they take it, and they say, I don't agree with this, I disagree with that. And you do this back and forth until you're at a point where um, you have discovery lined up, and you know what dates are going to happen, and what date, whereabout you're going to expect for this to be over, and you go to trial. You cannot... Take a paper that says defendant and plaintiff agree and file this jointly and then file it on your own without the other party having ever seen it. That is called a fraud upon the court. That's illegal. That's a crime. Um, and that's what Greer's done. Now, he has said that, oh, I didn't know that's how that works. I thought that I file it and then you submit a draft and we just file these drafts back and forth instead of just using fucking email. That's what he's saying. But it's like, it's such a disregard for how things are actually supposed to happen that it's just like, he says, as it says here, he says, 
I fully intend to prosecute this case, and I'm very confident I can follow the proposed schedule in the according APMR. So he's saying, I'm super confident I can figure this out. I'm super confident I can prosecute my case. And if you just give me one more chance, I can figure this all out and get this to trial. And what he's submitted as evidence is a fraud upon the court. <laughs> so this has to be it. I, I don't want to be optimistic because optimism is how you uh, suffer in agony and writhe in agony, but there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way that a reasonable person, because in regards to what he's filed, his want of prosecution shows that he doesn't give a shit about copyright. He just wants to try and punish me. And I'm a bad person. And the way that he's written this, it kind of feels like if the judge says, okay, you get another chance, he's agreeing. He's agreeing. I don't like this guy either. You can proceed. You can keep doing this. We'll give you another chance. And then the really crazy thing is the scheduling conference is not even the most difficult part of discovery. Discovery takes forever. It takes hours and hours of, of, of work sitting down and figuring things out. And that's why discovery in a trial is usually $30,000 on the cheap side of a civil trial. $30,000 to do discovery because that's such a pain in the ass. And Greer can't figure out the first step, which is the fucking schedule. He can't do the schedule. So this is if this doesn't go through now, the judge knows that in three months, we're right back where we started. He hasn't. He's ignoring court orders. He is not conferring with the um, opposing counsel. And we're going to be back to another show cause. And it's like, how many fucking times... How many fucking times, four years in, are we going to go through the exact same thing? Do X, Y, Z. He doesn't because he can't figure it out. He doesn't know what he's doing. No, really, do X, Y, Z or else. I promise, I promise it's a really bad year for me. But he's so, he, that Josh Moon's such a nasty guy. You really got to give me another swing at him. It's like, how many fucking times for real is that even a thing? It's just such a, it's such a, it's so insulting. It's so insulting. Um, so we'll see. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.